Hi, and welcome to the tutorial on how to make a responsive web design. My name is Ricardo, and I work at DCCAP. I'm going to explain the responsive web design technique through the DCCAP website, which enables the ideal viewing experience for websites across desktops, mobiles, and tablets. Let's get started. What you're seeing right now is a responsive version of our services page and our website. This means that whatever size the window may be, the contents inside will wrap accordingly so that the user can view the web page without any clutter or overlaps. So how do you achieve this? To explain that first, let me open the older version of this page, which was not responsive. And as we move ahead in the tutorial, we will explain how to convert this normal web page into a responsive one. Let's understand the folder structure of this page. What we have is an HTML page, a CSS file, and images folder containing images that are specific to the web page. What we have now is a simple HTML page in which I am including a meta tag known as viewport. This viewport property and the meta tag helps us control the zoom level of the web page so that we can control the layouts for different zoom levels. To achieve this, we set the width of the page to the width of the device. Along with the minimum and maximum scale as one, scale one provides maximum and minimum zoom out option so we can control the complete layout of the web page. Let's also include our CSS in our web page. And let's start our basic HTML design to our page. To make this tutorial short, I have already designed my HTML page. If you look at it, all the components are very basic with uh, div tags, anchor tags, list tags, etc. Since it's complete, let's have a look at our web page in the Firefox browser. It looks pretty bad, doesn't it? The reason is we have not included any design or layouts in our CSS file and it's empty. I have already made basic CSS layout design and I am including it here. Let's refresh our web page to see how it looks. Yes, now it looks good. But if you see, if you notice, 
just a normal web page and not a responsive web page. If we resize the text remains overlapped and we can see the scroll bar and not the complete text. So if this web page is viewed through the tablet or mobile, it will provide the user with a horrible experience. So to overcome that, let's begin our responsive feature. It gets really interesting from here. Let's open our CSS file where we will implement the required features for the responsive design. We include this tag known as at media, which will enable us to control the layout of the website for different screen sizes. Let's begin with screen size width of 1024 pixels and less. We use the setting for most of the landscape views in our tablets like iPad and Nexus 7. What this does is whenever we open our web page in a device that has a width of 1024 pixels or less, the coder uh, the code under this tag will be executed. This will help us control on how our web page will look in the screen size. So let's check out how our web pages will look in screen size 1024 pixels and less. Let's open Firefox in the main menu. Under the web developer, open the responsive view and open the web page to 1024 pixel size. And as we mentioned before, when we open the web page in the width of 1024, the code under this at media will be executed. And I am adding a property called display none. Now we'll just double check to see if it's working fine. You can see that we have an empty page. But as soon as we move to a bigger screen size, we can see the web page. This is this is a quick way to double checking whether we are in the right track. Let's remove the display none property and let's begin adding other screen sizes which open which means that if we view the page in 1024 pixels or less the page will not be shown. If our page does not come up then it means that the code under the tag has been executed. We will now add another at media tag for width of 999 pixels similar to the previous tags if we view the page in the screen that is 999 pixels or less then the screen layout will be based on a code that is written under that tag we can see that for 1024 pixels we have enabled three column view of our data however due to the smaller screen size we have enabled two column view of our data for the 999 pixel size Let's check out our web page looks like in different screen sizes. Now we can see that for the 768 pixel width, there are two column view of our website. And for the 1024 pixel width, we have a three column view. That means that the code under the app media tag of 999 pixels is being executed. Now let's add a final at media tag for this page, which is for 767 pixels. This setting helps us to enable an optimum layout for most of the mobile devices. If we compare the code of all these three settings, you will find that 1024 pixels is configured for a three column view. nine 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 pixels is configured for two column view and that seven sixty seven pixels is configured for a single column view now let's check out how the web page looks in a smaller screen size as you can see the data is shown in a single column view for any screen size with a width of seven sixty seven pixels or less 
and as we move across higher screen sizes, the web page responds dynamically. Now, this web page is completely responsive for a majority of the mobiles, uh, desktops, and tablets, and the pages align dynamically for an ideal view. Now, for the last tip in this tutorial whenever we place our at tag, at media tags, we must ensure that we place it in the center ending order of screen width because as the CSS compiles the code the lowest code is considered first let's do a small experiment and see how the web page responds to the small error we will place the 767 pixel code above the 999 pixel code ideally for the width of 6 uh, of 767 and less we should view the data in one single column yet since we purposely made a small error in width, the page looks haphazard with two columns. Hence, it's recommended that we place the at media tag in descending order of width size. This will enable us to provide an ideal view for all screen sizes. A small recap it is pretty simple to achieve a responsive design. All we need is to take our viewport property in our meta tags and configure them for different screen sizes based on our at media tag. Thank you so much for watching our tutorial. Do subscribe to our channel for more exciting updates and tutorials.